Hello and welcome to As the CMMC Churns. I'm Matt Titcom, the CEO of Peak InfoSec, a CMMC third party assessment organization, or C3PIO. I am also a certified CMMC assessor and CMMC curriculum developer. This episode of As the CMMC Churns is three types of evidentiary objects. This episode, we're going to channel a little bit of the count from Sesame Street. Kind of fitting, kind of fun, might as well. It's kind of a dry topic otherwise, so we might as well enjoy it a little bit. So interestingly, this came out of us starting to look and prepare uh, for CMMC certification events once the rule comes out, and then uh, working with DIBCAC on JSVAs, seeing how they're doing it, seeing how we'd like to improve and change uh, their process as the starting baseline. Now, everything we're going to talk about does come out of NIST SP 800-171 Alpha. Uh, this is the assessment guide, and this is specifically coming from Chapter 3. And we're going to be looking at each of the different uh, assessment requirements in the, the box that's defined in Chapter 3. Specifically, we're going to be looking at the assessment objects uh, underneath the examination method. Now, there's a lot of objects there. It can get a little bit overwhelming, and we've had organizations, as they look at that list, start to panic and think that they need to provide a complete uh, list of each and every one of those. Short answer is no, you don't. The list should not be reviewed, looked at as required artifacts, as it says in the highlighted section there. This is referential. Uh, and it is going to be completely based upon your environment. You're also going to find that these, uh, this list is fairly generic in nature, uh, and it's meant to be. NIST is not going to specify to a technology. They're defining requirements that help you to implement controls based upon the technologies, the people, the processes, the facilities that you are using to achieve the effect that's required in the requirement. Okay, so don't panic at this list. This is just a good shopping list of stuff you should be looking for. Now, on that note, let's take a look at some fun facts about examination assessment objects. We're gonna channel a little bit of Sheldon here from Big Bang Theory, but no flags will be shown. So overall, there's 879 examination assessment objects identified in 800 alpha. Holy crap. Well, good news is there's a lot of duplicates. So there's only 275 distinct ones. Sorry, math nerd here. It starts kicking in. As you start looking at that and we start breaking down what's going on, we see that the system security plan occurs 101 times out of that 879. That's a pretty hefty fit. That's almost one for every uh, requirement. Uh, other relevant documents or records occur 74 times. So you kind of got, this is the other end of the spectrum. It's the catch-all for everything else that may not be covered in the other requirements. Now, likewise, system design documentation occurs 59 times. This is telling us how the way it should be. And then system configuration settings or associated documentation occurs 65 times. Kind of, That's the technical part of it. Now, when we start looking at this a little bit more, other patterns do show up amongst all the other type of items that get identified. Interestingly, there's 232 times uh, a an object shows up with the word records in it. Hmm, records of your meeting minutes, records of changes, records of new hires being onboarded, etc. Huh, a lot of records are being requested as a part of this. There's 140 objects with the word plans in here. Again, pretty hefty number of plans are expected by uh, NIST for proving your implementation of 800-171. 123 are associated with policies. Hmm, there's more policy requirements than there are uh, assessment objectives. Again, under 171 alpha, we're not evaluating whether you've got policies in Rev2, except for a couple instances but then we're looking for specific statements, not the overall policy, but they're definitely expected proof. Procedures are also expected proof, 114 of them. Again, more than the number of requirements. 
And then there's 44 objects that have the word list in them. Uh, a list of users, list of privileged users, pretty common things that you're gonna see. Now, I do wanna highlight one thing quickly. A system does not equal IT system in S800-171. Specifically, we're talking about that combination of interacting elements organized to achieve one or more stated purposes. This is the glossary definition from NIST that also is used in 853 alpha, the sister, well, really the parent document for 171 alpha. <coughs> Related to that, when we look at the combination of interacting elements, we can pretty much distill it down to the people, processes, technologies, and facilities. So we start to take this and then put it back into the context of 171 um, paragraph 1.1 for your scoping. So if we can pull out the word components and really recognize that components is gonna to equal to one or more of the combination of interacting elements. In other words, a component can be a people process or technology and facility. Hmm. So keep this in mind. Do not get IT tunnel visioned when you're working through objects, evidence, and proof, and implementation. It's too dangerous and too easy to get sucked into this space. So let's jump into the three types of evidentiary objects. You probably, if you're smart and savvy, you already picked up on them. First, from the count, system design documentation. This is meant to tell me how it should be as an assessor. How should your environment be set up? Um, system security plan, really, and this is where you see the system design documentation comes up. Uh, this could also show up in policies, plans, and procedures. Uh, and this is really, in many times, coming out of organization-defined parameters. Now, again, NIST 800-171 Alpha, uh, Rev 2 has a whole bunch of implicit. Rev 3, now we see both explicit and implicit ODPs uh, that you're going to have to fulfill and document how you've done them. Now, you also then have system configuration documentation. How was it set up? Uh, this is, again, potentially you're going to do this in your SSP. Really don't recommend doing that because it's a pain in the butt. Go see another turns on that. Uh, there's also your security configuration settings and associated documentation. Hint, hint, wink, wink. This is everything you should be doing as a part of 341. Did you get the hint? 341. Uh, policies, plans, and procedures may also tell me, especially for things that are not technical configuration documentation. And then enterprise architecture documentation. Network topology diagrams are an example of that. Now, adding the system design documentation and system configuration will yield supplemental artifacts. They don't add up and equal. They will generate, they will yield the proof that it is working. And that's where we get to our third type of assessment objectives per the count. Now, this is lists of anything, records of, screenshots, training content, all this stuff. This is where you're actually doing it and it's provable this is the way it's working. Cool. So, three types. Keep them in mind. Now, jumping uh, back to a previous churns, your system security plan sucks. Seriously, uh, we kind of already hit this, so we're going to just re-emphasize this point in context of our SSP. So in that churns, we did cover 319 in, in a lot more detail than we are going to cover here. We're just going to re-highlight it, is that that system design documentation, you see then that supporting artifacts is the first subheader. Again, how should it be set up? Second one is your system configuration, how it was set up. And your last one is then your supplemental artifacts of proof that it works. This is how we document our notice and consent banner set up for 319 is peak infosec. Again, you can kind of see how we've got everything laid out to make this really easy for you guys. So let's sum up. There really are three types of evidentiary assessment objects. Stuff that tells me how it should be, the stuff that tells me how you actually set it up, and then proof that it is operating as intended. 
Um, use those three types to your advantage and think about it when you're going through your uh, documentation and prepping for your assessments. Uh, remember, system does not equal IT system. It's a lot more than that. So again, think bigger. Uh, also, uh, you don't need to use all of the uh, listed evidentiary assessment objectives in a requirement, but you need to give me enough to demonstrate your system is operating as intended. Finally, our SSP template aligns with these categories to make it easier for you to also keep uh, all this straight and par paradigmatically aligned as you're working through this. One final note, we did notice the Count had some highly shined shoes. Kudos to the Count on keeping them polished. Again, I'm Matt Titcomb from Peak InfoSec. Thanks for joining us for the CMMC Churns.